Assalamu alaikum, uh, my name is Dr. Hamza and today uh, we are with another session uh, for our students of Bowman Medical College. It is about public health. The guest today needs no introduction. He is the pioneer professor and uh, youngest VC. So we will just welcome him and go to the resume and ask a few questions about our session which our audience uh, told us to. Assalamualaikum, sir. Wa alaikum assalam, Thank you so much. Uh, sir, please introduce yourself for our audience, sir. Okay. Uh, I am Dr. Ziaul Haq, uh, uh, MBBS in a, a pioneer batch of Goma Medical College, and uh, very nice memories with Goma. Uh, my wife uh, is also from Goma. She was uh, one year junior to me. She is a radiologist, Dr. Jumnas. Uh, and wonderful four years. Then uh, in the fourth year, I came to Hebron Medical College uh, and graduated from there. But uh, the memories uh, I had with Roman Medical College is um, uh, very emotional when I hear about uh, Roman Medical College and uh, the time I spent there, and the friends I made there. I was also the literary secretary uh, of the first magazine, Hayan. So we produced the first ever Hayan. Uh, it was also a tremendous uh, experience and it really helped me. And then um, at that time there was a recognition issue with Women Medical College. So we worked really hard uh, and uh, also did some strikes and I led some strikes as well. But it was also uh, a wonderful experience. Now when students come to me, uh, so that, that skills which I acquired there, uh, that co I call it co curricular mm -hmm. and that skills that really helped me. I basically belong to uh, Deer Upper, uh, my district. Uh, currently, I live in Islamabad, my family there, but I live uh, for my job. I live at Peshaw. Mm -hmm. I have four kids and a wife is to be largest, so I currently the wife has a Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, tell us about uh, your degrees that you did after MBBS. So, uh, in fourth year, uh, I think it was uh, Dr. Hussain was there in Roman Medical College, and then I came to to Hebron Medical College. Uh, so, the community medicine uh, as a subject when when I read about community medicine, so it was what you can say love at first sight. So, the, the moment I uh, read the definition of public health, we call it community medicine and undergrad level. So I thought this is the subject, you know, like uh, we, for the first time we heard about infant mortality and maternal mortality and health systems, um, the modified or not modified respecters and uh, to see, to discuss about the health of community as a whole, not only uh, the individual patients. Mm -hmm. So I really uh, like, uh, it really took my attention in from that very moment, I never thought of any other subject uh, as my career. So from the fourth year, so before joining house job, I was doing house job in Denver Hospital. So before that, I joined Marshall Public Health course. So it was Gandhara University at that time. It was recognized by Pakistan Medical Legal Council. So I joined uh, so Marshall Public Health. So before even joining the house job. So since then I'm in public health and then I work with WHO uh, um, after my graduation. Uh, within my graduation, Master of Public Health, as soon as I finish a master uh, the house job, so I got a contract job uh, and I went into uh, the upper as my district. So the DHO said, where hospital I should place? I said, no, I'm sorry, I want to work with you. So he placed me as HMIS coordinator. Mm -hmm. and the data we collect on a routine basis from the, the BHO. So it was a very wonderful experience. I went into the basic health unit, to civil dispensary, to rural health centers, and just played with the data. And uh, really, it gave me the, the know how of the basic health system, the primary, mm -hmm. secondary health care. So after that, I, there was an earthquake in, in Pakistan. Uh, 2005, so it was in 2006, then I joined WHO uh, as service officer. So, big platform which I got, uh, and for two years I worked with WHO, and after that I joined Hebron Medical University as a lecturer. 
and working here for one year. I also work with CDC in Atlanta, their project here. I was working on the hepatitis service. And I went into Glasgow and uh, stayed there for four and a half years, did my PhD in public health. And, uh, and I did my postdoctorate from the University of Kiel in public health, then fellowship from Royal College uh, and Faculty of Public Health, and finally the FCPs in Community Medicine. So, so what you were doing is available in public health. So I'm allowed to die here in the end. Mashallah, Sir, uh, coming up to our topic, uh, we hear about MPH. So what basically is MPH, sir? So MPH, I said, MPH is a degree, Master in Public Health. But uh, before talking about the Master in Public Health, Public Health is a field, I think. So um, we, Public Health is a field which still is at, at infancy, I would say, uh, in Pakistan. It's is such an important field. Uh, and uh, you can see that after earthquake, people start recognizing what, what the public health is. And then after COVID, people realize its serious existence. Um, so, like before us, like my era people, before uh, the, the seniors we have, majority of them, they try their best to achieve clinical exam or any other field. And if they don't find any other field, they say, okay, let's do MPH. At that time, MPH was, uh, was a degree of people think is is escape or something like this is an easy or shortcut. Some of the seniors really did well and they they joined this subject or this field by him. But majority of the people working in public health, uh, they, they were like not uh, by their choice, but uh, there was this, they, they took it as an option. Um, uh, so that's why the public health uh, from the clinical side uh, they were not giving that importance to the public health because the people who were working in the public health were not skilled mm -hmm. enough. Uh, but then all era people came who took this by choice. So when we started Master in Public Health, I was a spine year faculty member and lecturer here uh, in 2009. Uh, so I, I do remember now that it was time that in uh, from 20 seats we, we usually get three or four applications or five applications. Now this year I could say that we have 400 plus applications for 20 seats uh, and majority of young graduates and we also have gold medalists from prestigious institutes like medical colleges and life and sciences who are now going for this field of master in public health as their entry into this subject. There are also entry in other exams, for example, MEC epidemiology. Uh, health research, some people come through public health to this pathway, some through health system and uh, in and, and foreign, uh, their degree of the fellowship, are, are like people do MRCP or MRCS in, in medicine and surgery, uh, the same pathway is for the faculty of public health UK, in which we have to play a part one. So these are different pathways entering into the public health. Now we started based, based in public health. So there's a huge demand of this TV now. So different ways into coming into the public health, but uh, the famous is the master in public health. Yes. Sir, uh, coming up to the important question, they say is it is it some myth that public health is only for doctors? Yeah. So tell us about it. How can like non-medicals, the students that are not doctors, can they come into this field like from nursing? from DPT, etc. Yeah, I think like, uh, uh, yes, we want doctors to come into this field uh, because doctors are the people who lead uh, the health sector. Uh, and so we want, we want, we are encouraging doctors to come there, but we are not limiting uh, this to the, 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 the leaders of the public. And for example, the current director general of WHO um, he is not doctors, but he is pathologist, immunologist. So there are public health leaders in, in, in many organizations in academia mm -hmm. who are not medical doctors but they are either from, from basic medical sciences or from clinical sciences, other sciences, non-doctors, pharmacists. So it's not only for doctors, um, this is a field which is open to everyone. 
but we at the same time we also encourage doctors to take this as a career path. Okay, sir. So what are the basic principles and key concepts that are taught in this MPH, sir? Like we hear about epidemiology, we hear about biostats, uh, so some people are like doing global health policy. Mm-hmm. So tell us about it. So the master in public health, like uh, the first thing which we teach them is introduction into public health. Okay, so what basically a public health? So I define always to my student uh, that the classical definition of public health is, is an arts and science of we, we call it three P's, so it's preventing disease, promoting health and prolonging life. So the first part is this arts and science. It's not only science, but it's arts. And then what it does, the, the three P's, preventing disease, promoting health. And the last bit is to the organized effort of the society. So these three bits I define my public health and I uh, teach to my students. And if you combine this definition, um, so that's what we teach people, we teach our students the arts, the social sciences part of it. And to the science, majority to the epidemiology, uh, it comes uh, 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 the science into it. And then how to prevent disease, how to promote health, how to prolong life. And then the last bit is to organize effort, how to uh, be a team leader, how to talk to people, uh, how to uh, bring people of different thoughts and different sectors to one table. So this is the organized effort of the society. So this is what we teach. So the subjects we divided, but the basic course is, uh, is designed towards achieving these three subjects. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. So coming up to the COVID-19, how did it affect this field? What were your experiences dealing with it? Uh, what new things you learned with, uh, from your experience, sir? Yeah. As a public health practitioner, we already knew that this will, pandemic will come. And we already knew that something is related to influenza. Mm-hmm. Um, in, uh, in 2008, I covered the H5N1, mm-hmm. um, this is the bird flu one. Uh, and, and, and even here in KTH hospital, we had the first human to human and human to human transmission. So from bird to human, and from human to human, another human. So two people died. The index case, we call it the first one. Uh, he survived, but his two brothers died. Uh, so we thought this is uh, uh, this this could be the pandemic. Uh, because of the, the, the traveling uh, all over the world, the, the ecosystem has been uh, disturbed by the humans. So we already knew that this will come. And, and, and this the, the outbreaks came in bits in Gulf, in Africa, in different countries. But uh, it really, we learned so much uh, from the courts. We said every disaster brings opportunities. So the policy maker, the common, the community people, the, the, everyone in the society, the, the, the businessmen, the shopkeepers, uh, the religious leaders, they all know, come to know the importance of the field of public health. Is something which you need a health system because in the COVID it was not the responsibility of doctors only. And and I call myself as hospital is one dot in the health system. It's not the whole system, it's only one dot in there. So we call it an upstream model. There's a downstream model and there's an upstream model. Downstream is you are here down uh, and waiting for the people uh, to are coming in the river and you take them away as you do surgery the orthopedic and the cardiology and the neurosurgery. But then there's an upstream model that you go up and you see why people are going into the river. So you build bridges, you make them understand, uh, to give them the skills how to swim, or you give them the resources to not pass through the river. So this is basically this upstream model in which in this COVID people realize that, that those uh, countries which has a strong health system which, which has all the ingredients there, they really uh, recovered, uh, and they did well in the COVID, and then after the COVID, uh, really, uh, they recovered really fast. So I think the, 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 and then different countries started public health programs uh, in the Gulf and other countries, mm-hmm. oh, and the students are now, uh, the fresh graduates, they taking it as an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Think, yeah. So, so the next question is, what skills or competencies are most important for success in public health and how can students develop them? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So, I mean, the public health, the first thing is the core, uh, the basic core subject of public health, which uh, you can say that this introduction into public health, uh, that would be by people, uh, our students, they know the health system, how the health system works. So, you have this, the knowledge of the health system, and then you have the necessary knowledge of the epidemiology, uh, and then the statistical. Uh, the analysis part and then the writer part uh, which we, the students learn, need to learn these skills and then uh, as a good communicator um, uh, which can communicate well uh, with people of uh, the technical language and also the non-technical language but to, to the, the person who can talk well and you can convince you have this convincing power so I think this is uh, uh, I tell my students, if you don't have computers, uh, it is, uh, you don't have the, the state or uh, the species or our software, you don't have the command in the system. It's like a surgeon without OT uh, as a, a physician without stethoscope. So you need to, to, to have these skills. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I just visited the conference and I was the only person that was sitting without a laptop. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and you entered and you said, Jis ke paas bhi laptop nahi hai, wo chala jayega sir. Yes, indeed, uh, sir, software uh, needs a laptop. Uh, it should be with us, it should be with the doctors. Uh, it helps us with research and the data collection. So, coming up to the research, mm -hmm. uh, what do you think the research uh, plays a role? Like, is it important, is it not? We are like fresh doctors, we are, we are medical students, how can they like start research? How can they like uh, take the first step and then move towards the last step? Yeah. So, uh, in, in public and master public health, this is not, this is a taught degree, it's not a research degree. But we introduce people into a public health research as a community research. Uh, we also teach them in other programs like MPhil and other basic sciences. We have a specific master in health research program as well. But in Marginal Public Health, there are research methodology and uh, different sections and then there are statistical section and then in the last six months you have to um, develop uh, uh, proposals and then conduct research and then write research and then disseminate the research. So this is the most important uh, skill which we teach our students and that's why uh, people say that when there are uh, research opportunities then people prefer our uh, our students, uh, the who have done masters in public health. So it's not primarily a research degree, but we do uh, uh, give them the necessary skills so they can do with this uh, community of public health research. So, what are the good journals? Uh, we have like uh, heard about the Cambridge Journal. So, most of the students have like you said, but they don't know how they can publish it. Please uh, invite us, invite yeah. us about it, sir. Yeah, so it's like uh, without research, uh, even if you're a clinician, if you're a public health person or in the specialty, uh, without the required number of publications, uh, you cannot excel. That is number one. Even if you're a good consultant, uh, but the things which will make you, you distinguish from other uh, in the interviews or any other panel or job, that will be the research. And with time uh, to come, uh, you will see that it will give uh, more importance. So uh, it's extremely important that you need to develop these skills. There's a research phobia uh, in which, uh, but but if you have you do the first two or three research projects in the right research articles, then that phobia is removed. And, uh, and you say this is like if you're a good doctor or any other health professional. You, you do all these different uh, skills you have, so the same skill you, you can write a paper, you could write a paper. Not every research needs money, you can do with your own resources. Mm -hmm. So the journal's options uh, uh, in Pakistan, uh, you can say that uh, we have only three journals, which are index journals, uh, which come into the midline and pump it. Uh, we are trying our best for the Clever Medical University Journal, mm -hmm. but at this moment we have uh, the, the, the U Medical College and the GPMA and CPSP, which are only there on the midlines. Uh, so, uh, gradually uh, uh, we are trying our best to have another edition of the KMUJ 
into the Indian standard. So uh, you see there are limited opportunities, but yet there are many, uh, many journals which are HEC recognized. So I will, uh, through you, I will tell my, the students, so the young doctors or other healthcare workers, that uh, when you write articles in any journal, try your best to first go for the index journal because it is visible to everyone in the world. So, so those who are indexed with the midline are PubMed. And then if not, we please go for the HEC recognizer. Okay, okay. thank you so much. Sir, so, uh, coming up to uh, NPS scope in Pakistan, uh, apart from KMU, what are the good universities that are offering NPS as a program? I think now majority of the, uh, the medical university they do offer public health program. But in every province, uh, the major university they so now Khan, Khan was not offering much of public health, they were offering in health system and health management. So, but the Sivin Siddiqui Saab, he was here uh, last week in our public health conference and they just announced that uh, Khan would do MPH program. So, our program here at uh, the Khaibhavad University is very famous in health services here in Islamabad, his programs in uh, IPH, the whole Institute of Public Health, the whole Institute of Public Health in Balochistan. They have the similarly low university and other universities. I have good master in public health. So it's around, uh, we say that six or seven universities or institutions which offer very good public health programs. Yeah. Okay, so uh, coming up to the game, you want, so what are the number of semesters uh, that are offered in NPH? Uh, Sometimes we hear that an NPH is like two years program, somewhere we hear it is like four year program, and I also heard it, it is like one year program. So, what sort of program here uh, it is it came to, sir? So, yeah, internationally it is one year program in Master of Public Health. But in Pakistan, the Higher Information Commission and the, especially the PMDC, they call it this level 2B program, so they want it to be a two years program. So in Pakistan also the first time in public MP started it was one year, but then uh, they said you have to convert it into MS. So our program name is now MS in public health. Okay. So it's a two year program and uh, there are three semesters, uh, each semester is six months. So one and a half year you have taught program and then the last semester is research and we have to kind of do a research and then uh, defend it and we send it to external. Mm -hmm. So this is a two years program. Probably. But the MSc epidemiology program which uh, we have at our Master in Health Research, it is modular program. Again it is two years, uh, but then they are divided into different modules, context session. So after every three or four months we have 10 days session and within uh, that you can do the assignments uh, as well. Yeah. Okay, so the number of doctors that are like doing uh, clinical work, like uh, coming up to me, I'm like doing host job. So can I like do MPH or MSc in epidemiology along with my house job? Or can I do it in, when I'm in medical school or when I'm working? Is it like uh, there is something like that? So the requirement for him to enter into a master program is the Higher Education Commission requirement that is uh, 16 years of education. Okay. So the bachelor degree required, you don't ask for house job, but then house job is necessary because if you don't do house job, then uh, the PUDC will not register you. Uh, so we don't ask, we ask for the bachelor program. So if you have 16 years of bachelor degree, then we have two part that the HEC recently uh, sent us a letter and we adopted it to our academic council and syndicate that the doctors or the nurse or the healthcare workers and uh, for them it will be a two years uh, degree, but uh, those who are from the social sciences, uh, then for them it is 60 credit hours. So it's almost four years for them okay. uh, if they want to do a master in public health. Program. So it's like two years for the doctors and healthcare professionals, yes, exactly. and it's like four years for the exactly. yeah. Right. Uh, so, uh, you just told us that you did uh, a job in WHO. Mm -hmm. A number of students they asked, uh, how can we like go to WHO and work there? Mm -hmm. uh, can we do it with the house here? So enlighten us about it, sir. So you know, in the field, uh, once we have in the public health field, the first thing is that I am really a strong believer in Allah, uh, and uh, my my friends uh, after graduation, 
the event system says the cardiologist and neurosurgeon and urologist they give part of their time which give you more money and name and fame so I, I told them at their time that uh, it comes from Allah Almighty the Creator so the name, fame and wealth is not in the field uh, but this is with the Creator uh, so after it, I, I didn't think uh, of money or anything after for the field, Alhamdulillah, the same field gave me everything. Okay. So uh, uh, the money which you can earn in public health is much, much more than the clinical sciences, but if you know the field. Yes. So the fields are different. Um, uh, you can come into the academia. Now in the academia, Alhamdulillah, we, have, we are working in the academia. Uh, other people are also working, but we have so many projects with every faculty. Um, uh, and their projects, they have good earning as well and they contribute as well. So similarly, um, uh, then you in the field, in, in the UN organization, non-government organization, NGOs, INGOs, the government sector, uh, in, in, in foreign countries we have different programs. So if you have the required skills, I think employment is not an issue mm -hmm. in any field, but especially in this public health is emerging field, but you should not be an average public health person. Uh, you must know and must have the required skills. Okay, sir. Okay, so, um, coming up to, uh, is it like uh, a question was asked that is MPH, uh, when we do MPH, do we get jobs in uh, government sector in Pakistan uh, or there are no such jobs in the government sector? We just have to work in private sectors. So, so I think this whole management cadre in, uh, in Department of Health, uh, they started this management then they discontinued it. But in the medical officer, uh, you can join and if you have martial public health, then you get a speedy um, uh, also promotion in that and then you get uh, all. And in health department, there are numerous jobs in hospitals, um, uh, in the MTIs. Uh, you can be a uh, hospital administrator, you can work in the district and team, and then in the secretariat, and then in directorates. So there are numerous jobs within the health sector, the public sector and also in the private sector. Okay, sir. Uh, coming back to the FCPS, uh, you said you did uh, FCPS in community medicine. So, uh, is it like recognized right now, like, do people opt for FCPS in community medicine these days, sir? Yeah. This is a very uh, good question you asked. So, uh, like the, the fellowship I have from the Royal College, uh, this is a professional training. So, the Master in Public Health uh, is basically a taught program. So, we the students come and they spend two years with us, and we take them to some to some field level. But majority is basically within the campus and uh, taught element. Uh, but then in the UK and other countries. Uh, the same way that you pass MRCP1, so you pass a membership of the Faculty of Public Health and you enter into the field, you spend some time in immunization and disasters and non-communicable diseases, communicable diseases, health system, financing, you do all these rotations and then you have intermediate module, and then you have a final module, after that you become, uh, uh, if you pass the exam, you become a membership and after the membership you become uh, converted the fellow of the faculty. Okay. So here in Pakistan, this professional uh, uh, training is missing. Uh, so we have M MPH. So this FCPS could be. Uh, I, I'm thinking what that, and I'm waiting for the, there is a council um, election next month. So a regular course will come again. So that will be my first agenda to discuss with them. So at the moment, people uh, are going for community medicine. Uh, as a field, but the curriculum in IC that needs improvement. Okay. Uh, so that could be uh, a professional qualification and the same as the Faculty of Public Health. Uh, so at this very moment, it's like uh, uh, those who pass part one in community medicine, they do a four year training, so they spend some time in hospitals, some in the medical colleges, mm -hmm. and others. So this is only for the doctors, community medicine. And uh, so it's a very good degree four-year course is equivalent uh, to the PhD program um, uh, uh, from the PVC side. The HEC side is equivalent to MPhil. Um, but this, if you could do a little improvement in this, this would be a very good degree as well. 
coming up to the world race right, uh, he said you did your full stuff on university mm-hmm. of glasgow uh, tell us about the scholarships that are offered uh, for studying nph or even post doc in the uk mm-hmm. so tell us about this i think in the uk there are limited opportunities mm-hmm. when we went there we went to the higher education commission scholarship yes in the phd you can get uh, different options uh, but the master there are few so you, but you get a lot of scholarship in the european countries um, in the sweden in, in the denmark and holland in different countries their program but we have not explored those areas in the australia there is a safe program a different program in the us So the scholarship program are there. People are doing it, different scholarship program. Um, uh, but one need to to look into this. But there are more options than in uh, PhD and in the postdoctorate. There are numerous options okay. uh, after the PhD. But PhD as also. But as it comes down to the master level, especially in the UK, I think there are very limited options. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, you did uh, mph basically from pakistan mm-hmm. and you had like for mm-hmm. exposure can you compare the program that is like being offered in pakistan with that of the uk sir i think in pakistan like uh, now they are very good program at that time uh, we uh, it was not comparable with 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 uh, with, with our country for example the glasgow i did my phd there from here and it is just 150 years old public health department So 150 years of experience they have it in public health. So of course uh, you cannot compare that. Uh, but now when I see my department here at uh, Cambridge, I think it's uh, I will not say far better, but it's really comparable with with any other foreign university. Yeah. So it's making a progress. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so coming up to sir, do we need a work experience to like get into a PH? like working with uh, in a uh, non uh, profitable government mm-hmm. organization or uh, any sort of private sector organization do we need any sort of experience that uh, mm-hmm. before yeah. we get into mbh for non doctors this is uh, for the social sciences in other field is a mandatory that you must have work in other for doctors they say we encourage doctors to come but now as the merit is very high mm-hmm. we have we get 400 applications for 25 seats so yeah, of course the preference Uh, is given in the interview process in the people who have worked there okay. um, they, they, they get preference but at the same time you also look into the young graduate okay. you are encouraging the young graduate to up this as a field so uh, if you have the will and determination and the clear vision and then uh, i think uh, not experience in uh, in the field will not uh, damage your candidacy that one yeah. Uh, any sort of semester programs, uh, I mean exchange programs that are offered in Cambridge, like the students spending few semester years can they like, move into the uh, university world or it like in UK or US? Is mm-hmm. such uh, are there any such programs that are been offered right now? We started exchange program with uh, China, uh, but due to COVID, uh, actually uh, we we stopped that program. In PhD program we have lots of programs. At uh, this moment we have five PhD students from University of Kiel, similarly the University of York. Their degree is from there, but they are studying here. Okay. So the Marsh and Public Health, yes, we have equivalency uh, uh, committee. Those people can come and uh, see. Uh, they apply for the, uh, for example, they have done some courses from there. They can go to the equivalency committee and get. Uh, They create uh, uh, counted into the uh, semester system. Okay. Um, coming up to several last question. Uh, how can we build our CV? How can we like uh, make it look good? Not just for going into a page, but any sort of field. Uh, you told us that research is our food. How can we like polish our CV? So please tell us about it, sir. I think uh, the first thing is uh, I will again repeat that. Uh, do up for a field looking into the people that this person is very uh, you know successful and he has that name fame and wealth in this field so you go look into yourself okay. and if you see that uh, this field is important or i love this field or this passion in your heart for this field uh, then nothing can stop you you know 
and all these healthcare workers, which are majority of people, they, they are brilliant. They are already the cream of the society. Uh, so they have all the necessary skills and genetics behind them. Uh, but it's only the field, so that career concern is very important. Um, so don't have to, don't rush into that field. Go and meet people if you want to become a cardiologist, or a public health person, or a surgeon, or a gynecologist, or anything. Go and spend some time, meet them, and see their routine, and then go because it's a big decision. And sometimes it's become irreversible in Pakistan. So spend some time there and then decide. And once you uh, that matches your inner self, that field, that frequency matches yourself, then the opportunities are numerous. And as I said, uh, nothing can stop you. Yeah. Exactly. As you just said, that we should spend some time. We just mm-hmm. uh, came up to you and we are having this session. Mm-hmm. So basically, a chain that we started and you are just part of mm-hmm. it that uh, we are trying to get you know, what's public field mm-hmm. so uh, students know. We know that it's like a new field to us. Mm-hmm. We have never like talked in detail with someone mm-hmm. uh, from the street. Sir. Thank you so much, sir. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sir, what is the message for our students of Common Medical College or to our general audience? I think they will just say that the, the, the technology is changing so fast uh, and, uh, and the artificial intelligence is coming in a, in a speed which is beyond our comprehension. Uh, and I can see that the next five or 